Welcome back everyone to episode 3 of Let's Play Atlantic Fleet as Germany in Battle of the Atlantic. So in the last episode we got pretty lucky with a nice submarine engagement sinking not only the whole convoy of merchant ships but we also sunk the heavy cruiser, British heavy cruiser, Suffolk. And that's going to net us enough renown to be able to go to our shipyard and uh, replace not only the Type 7 we lost, but this time we'll get the Type 9s. But a few more Type 9s as well. Um, I think we'll just leave two ships, two fleet um, spots open. So we're currently at 23 out of 30. Let's bring that up to 28 out of 30. So let's just buy five more Type 9s. Um, my reasoning for this, I'm not sure if we can get five. We're right at the limit. Um, I figure the sooner we can get submarines out, the sooner we can earn more renown and hopefully get the whole snowball rolling. And looks like we have just enough renown to get exactly how many ships I want. I want to leave the two fleet spots open just in case I have a chance to get some really powerful ships later in the game. And I'm sure that we'll probably lose a few submarines along the way here and there. Now the next time, the next um, type of ship I really want to get is the Type 21. Not available for quite some time. <laughs> I'm actually surprised that they let us get the Type 9s. I don't remember when the Type 9 was released, but I didn't think it was so early. But uh, I'm obviously mistaken. Or maybe they were already building them at this time, but they weren't. They didn't see action until 40s. But I, I don't know. Um, I wish I knew as much. I wish I knew that information, but I, I just don't sadly. Okay, so let's stop going to that shipyard screen. Where do we want to move these guys? I think let's just move the whole kit and caboodle into not an area you want to stay for long. As you can see that there's a lot of um, air power that Britain has. They even have air power and it looks like here and here and probably, okay, this is Spain, so maybe they don't. I mean, technically France covers this, so maybe until um, the 40s Maybe France or England has air power here as well. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I just don't know. But they in the last mission, they did have one single aircraft they were able to use and use it very effectively, we saw, to sink my submarine. So we'll be a little careful about that, which means, of course, this, is, this fleet is in a terrible position. So let's move them out. And let's get our light cruiser task force to go meet up with our heavy cruiser task force. Mission accomplished. Now from here, we'll break off one heavy cruiser group to um, patrol our home waters. And that's just because we have air power there. The air power is so powerful, it's so potent, that it's just, it's worth it to hope that you'll get some kind of engagement there. Uh, okay, and that means that we're covering our line correctly. Next turn, we'll actually be able to move some more of these ships around. We know we have some convoy fleet stuff going on. Down here, and we'll try to uh, we'll try to get some of these submarines down to the southern, more south in the Atlantic. Next turn. Okay, so we have. <laughs> I feel very bad for the Afridi. This won't be a very good engagement for her. Yeah, she wasn't able to. She wasn't even able to do anything. Uh, this is just going to be basically a big waste of our main gun shells, but let's see. Again, we don't need to be too conservative about those. We have 1350 on the nice now. So we'll just move full speed and uh, start targeting. Now the good news is, although the game doesn't do this, we can use the targeting information we get from the nice now to support how our um, Sharn Horse should fire. So let's just stick exactly to the 14.8 that they recommend. See how that goes. We'll use the big shells, why not? Only, that's only firing nine of them. And we see we were a little bit short. So let's go ahead and go up to 15 on the Sharn Horse. As we can see... Oh, but, no. aim for the Afridi first, please. As we can see, the angle is probably a little bit longer. Um, what was it, 14.8 on the nice now? And we'll probably go to 15.2, because it's a little bit further. So let's try 
they're recommending 16.2, and typically when you don't have any other firing guide, you'd be like, okay, well, I'll trust that. But since I have the nice nows information to rely on, okay, let's cut it down maybe to 15.4. I'm hedging my bet a little bit towards what their guess is. So we'll try 15.4. Gosh, that was... Oh, one of them was actually a hit. Because I guess when you hit the water right below the... Right next to the ship, it still penetrates. And they've lost their ability to torpedo. And that's probably the biggest threat to us. So that's quite good news. Not that we're there really long for this word, uh, world. We still have the Admiral Hipper available to us. And she can go and probably finish her off. Now, the Admiral Hipper is not... This is its own class, it's not the Graf Spey class. So she has what? Yeah, she only has 8 inch shells, so we can't use the targeting information from our battleships, um, unfortunately. So we'll just have to fire 18.4, whatever they tell us. Because <clears throat> we don't have any other guy. No idea. Yeah, that was really short. That's okay, we've already done, done a little bit of damage. Now, these destroyers are not going to be of any use to us, so let's just uh, get them to flank speed, and I'm not even going to bother firing. It's, it's useless. Especially the one further away, like this one maybe, but probably not. Just, it's just a waste of... Not that we ammunition costs money to replenish, it's automatically replenished, but it's a waste of time to even try to line up the angles. <laughs> so we'll move. She's probably going down on the next turn anyway. Still not close enough to fire. Well, that's unfortunate for her. If I was the crew in that ship, I would be abandoning the ship, I'd raise the white flag, I'd get to the life vest, I mean the lifeboats. I don't think you want to keep fighting this fight, my friend. So our last one was 14.8 and it was quite a bit short. We've actually closed a little bit of difference, uh, distance because this is less than 90 degrees, which means we're still angling a little bit towards them when we move. So in, a, in other words, I think 14.8 needs to be dropped. Now 14.8 probably needs to go up to just 15, maybe 15 flat because they were here when we aimed so let's go to 15 flat but they've gotten closer so I don't think that 16.4 is a good estimate yeah so that was good and maybe that's the end of her already yeah the Afridi sinking good so that's it that's the end of this very quick battle our battleships did their work and we almost have enough for another submarine. Not that we want one, we're right at the 28 level where I want us to be, but it's nice. And hey, the other thing is we're, we're starting to sink um, British submarines, so that's good. So let's get the 44 to go over here, join her buddy, 43 and 44, when I'll be a tag team there. And the rest of these guys are all going to head south. So we'll just move there for now. We'll probably move two in here and two there, and two more here. Wait, where are their convoys? Oh, here. We'll move two down here. And then we'll have a light cruiser fleet, I think, here. Yeah, that's what we'll do. All right. So let's start getting these guys off. Let's move the Graf's Bay south, because that was her historical location. And she was eventually lost in the Battle of the River Plata, I think, somewhere down here. Was it off... Brazil or Argentina? I can't remember. Argentina, right, I think. So, um, let's get those guys down there, start moving in that direction, and this will then be our home guard fleet. Just so I don't get the ships confused, let's just take one turn to move these guys over here, just for fun, and then we'll hit next. Okay, nothing happened on this turn. Um, it's risky for us to move here because we've already seen the air power, the effective air power, but I want us to get um, to home waters as fast as possible, so we'll just have to take that risk. And we'll keep these guys in Iceland. I think this will just be my permanent Iceland patrol. Yeah, that way if they take any damage, they're not so far away from home fleet 
um, home base as well. As you see, I think I already pointed this out, but Germany doesn't have any ports anywhere on the map except for her home base. So she can't even use Italy's ports to repair, which is um, unfortunate. Okay, so you guys are available to move. I don't think there's any merchant ships here. Oh, there, there are. Okay, I stand corrected. So let's do the whole shifting. You shift here, you shift here, and you will shift here. Which there are actually merchant ships there. Okay, so we'll probably leave the line just as we have it here then. It's a nice line. We're just cutting off any movement along this uh, latitude, so. No action last turn. That means that we can get our ships in the home waters, which is good. So now the only ones that would suffer an effect from air power are probably these guys and maybe these guys. Still nothing. Sometimes the mouse doesn't seem to work in this game. Now I don't know if the darker color means heavier presence or older information. I, I mean, I don't know. It's probably explained somewhere, but I don't know where. I would expect that just based on where these color codes are, the darker means the more ships there are there. So we want to make sure, yeah, we do have um, a good presence in the areas which are darker. And the lighter ones, we're leaving blank, so that's fine. Although, nothing in the Mediterranean, although the Mediterranean fighters are mainly... Actually, we probably should just move a, a light cruiser into the... Yeah, let's do that instead. So let's do this and have you guys move here so that we can get the light cruisers in to uh, the Mediterranean because we're probably going to fight, I mean, we have a better chance of fighting warships over there. And although submarines are really overpowered, we probably have a better chance of fighting the warships if we have a fleet, a surface fleet. Okay, so nothing yet. Let's go one more turn, another turn. We're week two of October. Okay, here we go. So unfortunately, this is again the same area where we are likely to suffer from bombardment from the from Great Britain, the island. But that's okay. It looks like we only have to sink the destroyer, and then we can mop up the rest of these. So okay, let's try it. So it looks like we are. This is the U-43, and it's kind of nighttime. They are moving directly at us. Oh, this is perfect. So I think we turn towards and then wait to see which way they're moving, and then we turn on the Vanquisher. The U-44 probably won't even get any action on this. <laughs> we'll just wait to line up a really good shot with the Vanquisher, and then we'll polish off the rest of the merchant fleet after that. But the question is, which way are they moving? I'm assuming, okay, yeah, they are moving towards um, the U-43. So let's do that. Let's move 20 degrees towards starboard, <clears throat> which wasn't quite enough, but that's fine, we'll keep going, we have plenty of time, and do not fire anything for quite a while. Now you, my friend, are going to have a hard time hitting anything. You're at a pretty good angle, but we'll just have you go flank speed and keep moving. Again, don't fire anything. So the move all, they're moving still 13 knots, that's pretty good speed. Yeah, I think we can just go 5 degrees. And let's go flank speed. Now let's just go full, I don't think it affects our ability to be detected, but... <clears throat> just in case. Okay, done. This one is still moving flank speed and doing nothing. Are they not zigzagging? It doesn't look like they are. I mean, that's going to make things a lot easier for me. <laughs> a lot easier to hit a target that is not varying its trajectory. Okay, we're still 5,000. Let's get down to like 4,000 before we launch torpedoes. Just to make extra darn sure we hit. Yeah, they are definitely heading in a straight line. That's not... You're not following procedures, good sirs, but I, I'm very happy that you aren't. 
Okay, yeah, just keep moving your... You're not really part of the whole piece. Oh, now they're moving. That's not good. They waited too long. Now I have to do some 30 degree turn. Done. Move. Done. And moving back. Okay, so it just took them a little bit of time. Now they're getting into the swing of it. Let's move 20 back. We'll probably have to fire torpedoes on the next turn. So that's what I think. They are moving away though, so maybe we'll wait. Now let's just do minus 20. That's our direction. Yeah, let's see what minus 20 does for us. We're currently facing this direction, and now we're facing... Yeah, I'm probably another minus 10 or minus 15 on the next turn. And... <clears throat> see how they move from here. They're still pulling away, but they're going to come back to us next turn, I think. Because that was not... That movement wasn't as much towards the right. So since they are moving away, we'll wait until for, the, for them to start swinging back. Still aren't really moving. They're actually still moving away. Okay, we'll speed up a little bit. And 47, we're hanging at 4700, so... I want to know what they're doing, though. I need to see what kind of pattern they're moving in. Still moving away. Okay, well, let's just predict that they're going to keep moving away. Flank speed, full speed ahead, and we got to fire torpedoes now. That angle is so oblique. No, I think we have to just hope that they're going to come back. In fact, this other ship is probably in a better position. No, yeah, she's way too far away. We'll still pretend that she's going to be the one to fire at the destroyer. Yeah, they keep turning. What the heck is this? Huh. It's very erratic. We have to wait. We have to see what they're doing now. Okay, you are still... You need to turn probably another 5 degrees, 10 degrees, 5 degrees. Move. Flank speed. Okay, good, yeah. And now they're moving straight. How bizarre. Okay, well. Let's try to cut them off in a little bit, in a few more turns. Again, that's all, so this is all just about singing the destroyer. Okay, now they're turning back. That was a lot of turning to finally be turning back now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now you're probably going the wrong way. <laughs> yeah, okay, they're coming back. That's good. So you can see we've lost a lot of distance in this whole process, though. Yeah, they're turning back hard. Okay, that's good. So we'll, we'll end up getting a good shot off with this ship after after all. After all that. So you never know how they're going to move. This is why you, gotta, you have to watch. You have to pay attention. I'm going to wait for them to start turning back to starboard before I launch. Because I want to know exactly what they're doing. Oh, okay, there's their turn back to starboard. So we know we have to lead. We don't want to lead them as much as it says we want to lead us. The, we, I butchered that. We don't want to lead them as much as it's going to say we should lead them. Because they're not going to keep going. They're going to be turning off. Which one is going to cut the angle we can actually fire at them with? So 10.2 is like a worst, probably the worst case scenario. So let's do something like this. Nine 
and 11. 11.1, just because I'm not really happy with this spread. But I made my decision, so let's go. These guys have to get beyond that merchant ship, too. Good, they did. Yeah, they're almost they're almost to the destroyer already, so we're in good shape, I think. In fact, we might under we might not have done that correct enough. I might not have aimed. Let's find out. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, we're in good shape. <laughs> Very good. Now I think we just do the sink the rest of the merchant ships and carry on. So let's see if this option is available to us. Um, go ahead and... Can I do it? Yeah, sing merchants and withdraw. There we go. Alright, well, I mean, that's already been another 20 minutes in this episode, so the submarine, it looks like we're averaging just one battle an episode. Maybe we'll move on a little bit further anyway. Just to see, well, let's first think about these guys. How are they doing as far as torpedoes go? 12 torpedoes on this one. Still 22 on the 44. So this is the one that's been in a couple battles, I think. Actually, she's actually upgraded to the second tier. I don't remember what the upgrade does. I think just increases the accuracy, or maybe it'll decrease the reload turns. I doubt it, though. That'd be a significant decrease from 3 to 2. Anyways, I'm not sure, but it doesn't have a negative effect. I'm sure of that. So, 12 torpedoes is still enough. As you can see, the most we've fired in a battle is six. So we'll, we'll be okay. All right, and this is um, a lot of, there's a lot of events like this. Allied convoy attacked by submarines. They've lost this much. Although we weren't engaged in an actual combat, if you line up your ships in the right location and there's no actual fleet combat, you get these events which sometimes um, sometimes they're helpful. Sometimes if you're, I've had it where if my submarines were in the English Channel, it said uh, Allied um, Aircraft Bomb Submarines, and then one of your submarines is actually damaged, light damage. But I don't think, I'm pretty sure they don't ever sink a ship from these events. So, so that's good. And looks like another turn of Allied Convoys being attacked by submarines. Which seems true enough. Okay, this is... Oh, warship attacked by Axis aircraft. So we damaged one of their... One of their... Um, surface ships. Here. Ah, interesting. So our air coverage technically extends to the... In the English Channel as well. It's a little early for that, I think. But yeah, we'll take it. And we're definitely not going to move any ships in to follow up. So. So the one more turn... Uh, Syndrome is starting to sink in. <laughs> we keep playing one more turn. Yeah, I think we're doing a good job covering the places we want to. We haven't had any action in the Mediterranean, which I'm a little disappointed by. And if I wanted to do like a really bold move, what I probably would do is move my entire... Oh yeah, maybe we should just do it for fun. Because I would trust this group going up against uh, a British Dreadnought fleet. So let's get them down there. And we'll bump this submarine out to somewhere over here, where they'll be more effective anyway. So, okay, wow. This is incredible. We're going to have air power, so this is a great battle for us. They don't have any escorts, so they won't be able to deploy smoke or anything. Not that they usually utilize that anyway. So our mission is going to be stay as far away as po possible and try to sink these purely with air coverage. We'll probably just use smoke on everyone. <laughs> actually, we can't use smoke on everyone because we need at least one person to actually like control the aircraft. But I think we'll do this one in the next episode. So thanks for watching this, and I'll see you for episode four, where we do some dive bombing practice on the British um, heavy, their heavy, their capital ships. Until then, take care.